Keep tuned to this station for the latest news. The Linux Show, starring Nick Carter, Master Detective. Presented by Acme, America's great producer of fine quality paints. This is the story of a man known the world over as one of the most daring and resourceful characters in the history of detective fiction. A man whose name has become a symbol of the triumph of right and justice over the sinister forces of crime and lawlessness. A man recognized as one of the great masters of deduction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Today's exciting case, The Sixth Statue. Another exciting chapter dramatized from the life story of Nick Carter. In just a moment, we'll hear how Nick Carter investigated a strange plague called bronze disease that murdered two people and almost killed a third. Who's the busiest homemaker you know? Like as not, it's you, yourself, and no wonder, for these are busy times. But fortunately, there are fine new shortcuts to the homemaking job. Shortcuts such as the three great Linux home brighteners, which save you so many hours of work. No wonder American homemakers everywhere have come to depend on the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux clear gloss, the modern brush-on finish. Linux cream polish for fine furniture. And Linux self-polishing wax, the amazing new quick-drying wax product. Learn for yourself how simple a job home upkeep can be, how much lovelier your home will look with those three great Linux home brighteners. Get them at your hardware, paint, or department store and see what modern magic they work for you. And now for today's exciting case from the life of Nick Carter. The regular morning work in the old brownstone mansion at the corner of 5th and 4th begins with Nick's voluminous correspondence. Scores of letters arrive every day, official, semi-official, friendly, threatening, and every once in a while a strange note arrives, like the one Patsy is reading to Nick now. Dear Mr. Nick Carter, you are a famous detective and would not know me as I am only a housemaid. Oh, this writing is terrible. But... I have heard you will always help people if they are in trouble, so I am taking the liberty to ask you, would you help me? Mr. Carter, there is bad trouble in the house where I work, Mr. Horace Allen's house on Park Avenue. There is, is plague in the house, a bad sickness, and I think we will all die. The statues got sick first, and I know we will get it next. Please come and tell me what I should do. In clothes, please find muddy order to pay for your trouble. Yours truly, Maisie Leeds. For the love of Pete. Oh, I really think this is touching, Nick. Look, here's the money order. Five whole dollars. Generous fee, considering Miss Leeds probably earns only 20 a week. Wish you hadn't sent it. Let's see that letter, Betsy. Here. Horace Allen. What, that's the famous ex meat packer, isn't it? 1270 Park. <laughs> Very rich. Yes. Hmm. Letter mail last night. Written in a great deal of hurry. Notice the ink blots? Mm -hmm. Miss Leeds seems to be rather frightened. Well, what's all this about plague? Now, here's the key line. Statues got sick first, and I know we will get it next. Statues got sick? But what's that mean? I think we better drive to 1270 Park and find out. Right now? Oh, can't it wait a few minutes, Nick? We've got so much work to do here, and, well, Miss Maisie Leeds' trouble is probably a very vivid imagination. You've forgotten. I've been paid a retainer, Fessy. I'm now devoted to the interest of my client. Let's go see Maisie, even if we have to go in through the servant's entrance. <laughs> Pretty swank mansion for an ex meat packer, Nick. Yes. Heard Mr. Allen's turn to art in his retirement. He collects. Oh, I wish you'd go back to meat packing for the duration. You can't eat statues and packers. Very funny. No one home. Should be servants in the house. They don't seem to be. Oh, Nick, you're you're not going. Don't to... have to. The door's been left ajar. Come on. 
Oh, Nick, this isn't right. I've got a feeder on, Patsy. Come on in. Besides, it's rather unusual for a collector of art to leave the house door open when there's no one home. Now, oh, there's the library. Let's go in. Oh, golly. Plenty of stuff here. Paintings, statues. Nick, look at those statues. The bronze ones. Yes. They're, they're all greenish and crusted. Like they've got some kind of skin disease. And those bronze spears, too. And this bronze chest. I wonder how it looks inside. Maybe this... Nick. Yes. Looks as if the plague has killed our client. As I'm very much mistaken, this body in the chest is that of Maisie Leeds. <laughs> been through most of the house, Nick. There isn't a soul around. What's happened anyway? Don't know yet. Learn anything from the body? It's Maisie Leeds, all right. Dead about ten hours. She must have been strangled and placed in this chest just after she mailed that letter to me. Oh. Patsy, there's an odd thing about this murder. It looks as if the killer had silver polish in his hands. Silver polish? Yes, there's a kind of white powder on Maisie's neck around the strangulation prints. It smells like silver polish. And, Nicky, you'd better notify the police. No. Why not? Listen, Patsy. Maisie Leeds paid me $5 to take on her case. I didn't get her soon enough to save her life, but I am going to get a killer. This is a point of honor. Something Sergeant Matheson wouldn't understand. Well, what are you two doing uh, in Nick. here? Don't move, either of you. I'd suggest you put that gun away. You might hurt someone. Answer my question. What are you doing in here? Who are you? I'm Nick Carter. This is my secretary, Patsy Bowen. Nick Carter? Yes. Well, I'm Peter Craig, Horace Allen's nephew... I was up on the top floor, heard someone calling down here. That was me. So I came down. What's the matter, Mr. Carter? Look in the bronze chest. Good grief, Maisie. All right, Craig, I want some quick answers from you. Why was the house empty when we arrived? Where's your uncle? Where are the servants? Well, there aren't any servants. They all quit yesterday, except Maisie here. Uncle Horace rushed down to the employment agency this morning. That's, that's why I'm alone in the house. I see. But you didn't see Maisie Leeds this morning? No, I... Well, I generally stay in my rooms on the top floor. Uncle Horace just yelled up that he was going to the agency. What agency? The Sun Agency on Vanderbilt Street. One more question, Craig. You know anything about bronze statues? No. Who sold these to your uncle? St. Gennaro Field, English dealer at the plaza. All right. You stay here. Try and locate your uncle on the phone and get him home. We're hustling over to see Arrowfield. I want to find out what six statues have got to do with murder. Mr. Carter, that man Allen is an idiot, a fool, an artistic criminal. I should never have sold rare pieces to an ex-meat packer. Go on. Antique bronzes are as delicate as tropical fruits. Unless they're cared for with delicacy and understanding, they sicken. You mean statues can really become sick? Yes, and die. Bronze disease is a corrosion that eats away the metal, rots it until it crumbles. No one knows how it starts. No one knows how to stop it. Once it attacks a collection, the infected pieces must be removed or the entire collection will die. Golly. And bronze disease has attacked Alan's collection? You saw it, didn't you? The green crumbling crust on the surface of the bronze. And unless he removes the infected pieces, his collection is doomed. But why did you call him an artistic criminal? He has a half a million dollars worth of items there. All the money in the world can't replace one of those pieces once it's lost. Don't you understand there's nothing more valuable than a work of art? Oh, yes, there is, Mr. Arrowfield. A human life. Ah, here we are, Patsy. The Sun Employment Agency. Hmm. Doesn't look very busy. I'm sorry, nothing available. We're looking for Mr. Horace Allen. And yeah, not here. He was here this morning? Here and gone. Can't supply him with anything. Why not? Sleeping quarters are impossible. The nephew's a chemist or something. Did you say the nephew's a chemist? Yes, has a laboratory alongside the servants' quarters. Terrible smells all day and all night. Well, chemists ought to know more about bronze disease than Craig seemed to. Patsy, let's have a talk with that young man right now. <laughs> Here we are. 
Nick, do you think Craig was lying? Don't know, Patsy. Perfectly possible. Uh, I hope Mr. Allen's back by this time. With somebody to answer the door. At least Craig ought to answer. Probably back upstairs in his laboratory. Well? Nick. Just my little pick lock, Patsy. Can't wait here all day. One second. There we are. Hello? Anybody home? Funny. You told Craig to stay here. Well, let's run up to the top floor. We'll find him there. Walk? Right. Haven't you noticed? Alan has a neat little private elevator installed. Oh. Step in. Call your floor, please. First floor, dining room, smoking room, lounge room. Second floor, bedrooms, bedrooms, and more bedrooms. Third floor, hot houses, bedrooms, and more bedrooms. Fourth and top floor, servants' quarters, and... <gasps> Nick, look, on the floor, it's, it's Craig. Yes, fourth and top floor, murder. <laughs> First, a murdered housemaid, then a murdered chemist. How will Nick explain them and solve the mystery of the six statues? We'll see in just a moment. One of the most important jobs in keeping your home spick and span is the care of your floors. And now you have an efficient new shortcut to that very job. Linux self-polishing wax made from a new formula developed by leading chemists to give you the finest. For Linux self-polishing wax, designed to save work for you, at the same time, provides amazing new beauty, new protection, new skid resistance for all your floors and linoleum. Linux self-polishing wax imparts the satiny luster that only real wax can give. And because it contains the greatest possible amount of genuine carnauba wax, the finish lasts longer. What's more, the underwriters' laboratories have proved by actual test that any hardwood, linoleum, or rubber tile floor is less slippery after Linex self-polishing wax has been applied. Best of all, Linex self-polishing wax takes only a jiffy to wipe on and dries without tiresome rubbing to a handsome finish to make any homemaker proud. So follow the example of women all over America. Enjoy greater leisure, greater convenience, greater beauty in your home with Linex self-polishing wax, available at your hardware, paint, or department store. Ask your dealer now for all three great Linux home brighteners. The easy way to more attractive living. And now back to our story. Investigating a strange complaint about six statues, Nick and Patsy entered the empty home of Horace Allen to discover Allen's housemaid, Maisie Leeds, murdered. Nick finds that Allen's artworks are suffering from a rare disease known as bronze disease and also that Alan's nephew, Peter Craig, is an amateur chemist with a laboratory on the top floor of the house. When Nick and Patsy return to the house to question Craig, they find him murdered, too. Now they're in the murdered man's laboratory examining his body. But, well, Nick? Stabbed through the chest with a brown spear, Patsy. Evidently, one of the spears from Alan's collection. Golly. It's a powerful thrust. You see the tip protruding from Craig's back. You can also see it's tainted with the same bronze disease that's hit some of the statues. Ah, uh-huh. hello. Well, what is it? Craig didn't die at once. What do you mean? Look, here on the floor. Oh, Craig must have tried to write something in blood as he was dying. Yes. It says N-H-L. N-H-L, what's that? Couldn't tell you yet. Nick, I've got it. Initials. He wrote the initials of the killer. Maybe. Uh, 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 couldn't be Alan or... Or Arrowfield, or the Sun Agency. Maybe it was one of the old servants. Hey, what's going on in this house? Where is everybody? What ghost is? Nick, I think I hear. You uh... don't think you do hear our old friend Sergeant Matheson. Hey, anybody home? Craig, Alan. Hey, Mister Allen, I. Oh, glory be! I'm seeing things. Oh, we're real, Sergeant. Good afternoon, Matty. Nick Carter and company. I might have known. What are you two? Hey, who's that on the floor? Peter Craig. Murdered. Craig, too? He's the guy that called me. First the girl downstairs, now him upstairs. 
What is this, a massacre? I'll give you the facts, Matty. No, 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 no. Explanations first, if you please, Mr. Oh, Carter. Here we go. Now, look, I warned you a thousand times when you get mixed up in murder cases to notify homicide. There's a law in this city. Don't you ever do anything but break the law? Yes, I solve murders. You ought to know. Yeah, 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 I know, but Nick, please. We've got laws to enforce. Make it as easy as you can for us to enforce them. Matty, I'm going to help you enforce one law today. The law against first-degree murder. Come on down to Alan's laboratory. So that's exactly where we stand in the case, Matty. The murders are tied up some way with the bronze disease. Yeah? I have an idea how, but I'm not sure yet. Well, look, uh, what about the insurance angle? Maybe Alan's trying to ruin his own statues to collect the dough on them. Oh, no, Matty. He could get more by selling them. Well, maybe Craig ruined the statues and Alan killed him for revenge. Maybe, but I doubt it. Besides, that leaves out Maisie Lee. Oh, forget her. She's just an accident in this case. She's not an accident in this case, and she's not to be forgotten. Matty, you won't understand this, but in this case, I'm working for Maisie Lee. I'm not working for you or the police. What's that? I'm working for justice. Justice for Maisie Lee. I think you're crazy. Huh? See, Patsy, I told you. Well, 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 huh? well. I'm pleased to see you all here. And a fine lot of people you seem to be. I'm Mr. Allen. Oh, yeah? Yes, indeed. Very easy man to work for. Just myself, my nephew in the house. Big house, few people, not too difficult, eh? I suppose the agency explained. Mr. Allen. You're the housemaid, eh? Very pretty, my dear. Very Mr. Allen, your housemaid is Miss Patsy Bowen, my assistant. The what? I am Nick Carter. Nick Carter, but I... I'm going to be blunt, Mr. Allen. No sense beating around the bush. Your maid, Maisie Leeds, was strangled to death. Your nephew, Peter Craig, was stabbed to death. What? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, help me in the chair, Matty. Yeah, right, Nick. Easy, Easy now. Thank you. Uh, I'll be all right. I didn't spare you because we're pressed for time, Mr. Allen. The killer may strike again. We've got to work fast. Now, where were you all day? At the employment agencies, trying to hire servants. A likely story. Yeah, it's true. I had to have them in the house today. I... Have a very important guest coming arriving on the 6.30 train from Washington. Says you. You can get the list of agencies of Mr. Allen and check the story later, Matty. Okay. Mr. Okay. Allen, I want to take one of your statues home with me. One of the diseased ones. I, uh, I'm sorry. I can't permit that, Mr. Carter. My guest coming tonight. But you ought to remove the six statues anyway, Mr. Allen. Mr. Arafield said so. Why, they'll infect everything. I know, I know, but I can't. My guest is a famous collector and wants to buy some of my pieces. I've got to show him all of them. I see. Well, in that case, we've got to work without your help. Come on, Patsy. You'll be in my lab if anything breaks, Matty. Right. Oh, by the way, Mr. Allen, what's the name of this famous collector who's visiting you tonight? Uh, Norman Lane. Uh, Norman Hadley Lane. Oh, Patsy, turn off the Bunsen burner, will you? Of course. Nick! I just realized what Alan said. What's that, Patsy? The man coming up on the 6.30 train from Washington. Norman Hadley Lane. N-H-L. Mm-hmm. Found at a couple of museums. Get a file on him. But, but, but the letters, N-H-L, that's his initials. Mm-hmm. Oh, Nick, you're not listening. Just finishing this analysis, Patsy. Here. See this precipitate? Yes. That's the... Silver polish from Maisie Lee's throat. Is it silver polish? No. Something that came from Peter Craig's lab. Now hand me that package I brought from Alan's house. Um, here. Thanks. I'll wrap mm, this. Nick, you don't seem to care about the initials. I'll bet Lane's the killer. I'll bet he isn't even on the train. He's probably here already. Huh. Here we are. Nick, that's the spear that killed Craig. Right. But that's stealing police evidence. Oh, golly, Sergeant Matheson's going to be sore. Alan would let me have a sample of his diseased bronze if I had to steal it. Now let's cut a sliver of bronze off the tip of the spear, and we'll take a look at it under the microscope. Now you're destroying evidence. Oh, Nick, Nick, I don't like it. Not destroying. I'm just taking off a shaving. There. Now, now let's see. Well? Ah. Well, what do you see, germs? Yeah, well, that's you have a look. You see? This is a slice across the tip of the spear. Now, you see the outer portions? Uh, those crystals all around the edges? Yes. The malachite crystals. Shows the presence of the brown disease. Now, what do you see inside, toward the core of the section? Uh, just reddish metal. 
Exactly. Amorphous bronze metal, just pure, uncrystallized bronze. And that, Miss Bowen, breaks the case wide open. What, what do you mean, Nick? I mean that... Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Nick Carter? Speaking, who's this? Here's a tip for you, Mr. Nick Carter. If you want to find who killed Peter Craig, watch the clerk from the Sun Employment Agency. Quick, Patsy, get a line on this call, trace it. Right. I'm afraid I don't follow you. The clerk from the Sun Employment Agency. You'll find him at the Hotel Brighton. Now, he'll tell you who killed Craig. Uh, just let me get that down, will you? Hotel Brighton. Uh, wh- whereabouts is that? I've talked long enough. You know what to do. Goodbye. Oh, it's no use, Patsy. I couldn't hold him long enough. Did you get any kind of a trace? No. Sorry. Well, it doesn't matter. Get Matty on the phone. Tell him we're picking him up and take him for a ride. To the Hotel Brighton? Just tell him the killer will be at the other end of the ride. Right, Nick, never mind the Mysterioso stuff. Where are we going? Thought Patsy told you, Matty, to meet a murderer. Where? Didn't Patsy tell you that? The Hotel Brighton. Then we're going the wrong way. The Brighton's downtown in the village. You're driving uptown. That's right. But, Nick, the man on the phone said that... The man on the phone was wrong, Patsy. Here we are. This is where we're going. Huh? What time is it? 6.25. Oh, just in time. Come on. Oh, this is Pennsylvania Station. Right. And we're going to meet the Washington train. Do you mean to tell me the killer is this Lane guy? Norman Hadley Lane? That's who we're going to meet. We'll have to move quickly. We haven't much time. Oh, but Nick, we... Talk later, Patsy. I'm afraid to cut it rather fine. We've got to get to the lower level and be on the platform when the train pulls in. This way. If this is a wild goose chase, Nick... When I lead you wrong, you can say that, Maddie. Not until then. Down this ramp. Right. Now, that's the Washington train. Quick. Oh, we'll never get through the crowd. We've got to. Here. Here are pictures of Lane. Yeah. Take him. You can't miss him. He's a big man. Quite stout. Eddie Gray is beard. Uh-huh. Looks like Edward the Seventh. Look sharp. Now we mustn't miss him. Now listen, Nick. I... This is no time for arguments, Matty. We've got to locate Lane as soon as he gets off that train. Now stand by. Right. I'll take the center. You watch right. Matty, you take the left. Okay. Right. Fat man, Edward the Seventh, beard. Oh, what a crowd. I think. Oh, oh if we no. only knew which car he was. Hold it. There he is. Car in front of us. Quick, Matty, forward. Right. Mr. Lane. Mr. Norman Lane. Norman Hadley Lane. Get down. Get down. Nick, what are you doing? He's tackling me. <laughs> Matty, you got him? Yes, I got him, Nick. All right, hold on to him. Right. Let's take him to the station master's office. You can call the wagon from there. Well, it is quieter at least. Hey, Nick, why didn't you warn me it was going to be an assassination? Didn't know when it was going to happen. Oh, what about Mr. Lane? Oh, I just put him in a cab. He's all right. He's pretty well shaken up when I knocked him out of the way of the bullets. Now, that's a lot better than a shot through the heart. Huh, Mr. Arrowfield? Why, oh, you dirty gumshoe snooper. I'd like to... Hold on, Matty. He's a dangerous little man and a very clever actor. <coughs> phony Englishman, phony dealer in art objects, including phony bronzes. Phony bronzes? Certainly, Patsy. That was the whole motivation. When Mr. Allen took up collecting objects of art, Arrowfield got hold of them and sold him a lot of supposedly antique bronze masterpieces. But in reality, they were completely phony being merely modern copies of those masterpieces. And unless I'm wrong, Mr. Norman Lane owned many of the originals from which Allen's bronzes were copied. Well, Nick, uh, what about that bronze disease? When Arrowfield learned that Lane was coming to see Allen's collection, he knew Lane would recognize many of Allen's bronzes as copies of items in his own collection. Yeah? So Arrowfield, in order to force Allen to remove those phony pieces from his collection, deliberately infected them with a bronze disease. What do you know? Allen refused to remove them in spite of the disease, so Arrowfield had to do the next best thing. Kill Lane. Otherwise, he faced exposure as a dealer in fakes and phony pieces. The murder of Lane, fortunately, didn't succeed. The others did. And I'm going to see that you pay for them, Arrowfield. I want to be sure that Maisie Leeds, wherever she is now, gets her full five dollars worth. In just a moment, Nick will be back to give you the final details of today's story and tell you how he knew Arrowfield was the poisoner of the sick statue. The whole year round, it's a real job to keep your home bright and interesting. That's why the three great Linux home brighteners are so important to help in your homemaking schedule, because they save so much time and work. Take Linux clear gloss, for instance, the modern brush-on finish for all wood and linoleum surfaces. Linex Clear Gloss is ideal for any surface you want to save, 
protecting for months against wear, against dirt, against spotting, warding off damage by hot grease, boiling water, fruit acids, even alcohol. And Linex Clear Gloss lends such sparkling beauty, beauty that's easy to maintain, for the whisk of a damp cloth removes smudges from any Linex Clear Gloss surface. Linex Clear Gloss flows on easily, too, drying to a smooth, lasting finish which protects for months. So give your linoleum, floors, and woodwork the gleaming luster, the sturdy protection of Linex Clear Gloss, the finest in household finishes. You'll find all three great Linex home brighteners, Linex Clear Gloss, Linex Self-Polishing Wax, and Linex Cream Polish for fine furniture at hardware, paint, and department stores everywhere. And remember that your dealer is headquarters also for Chemtone, the miracle wall finish. Chemtone covers in one coat, dries in one hour, bringing bright new loveliness to your walls and ceilings in bedroom, living room, or hall. <laughs> And now let's hear from Nick Carter himself. Nick, I don't see why Arrowfield killed Maisie Lee. Because when Maisie returned from mailing her letter to me, she saw Arrowfield in the collection room deliberately infecting the false antique bronze statues with the bronze disease. She was killed to silence her. But how could Arrowfield poison the statues? Well, Patsy, as Alan's guide and mentor in the new business of collecting, Arrowfield had easy access to the house. He was able to steal in and infect those statues with chemicals he took from Craig's laboratory. To be precise, with ammonium chloride. That's the corrosive agent that causes bronze disease. Oh, and was that the powder you found on Maisie's neck? Right. Some of it was on Arrowfield's hands when he strangled her. Evidently, Craig remembered seeing Arrowfield in his lab taking the chemical, so Arrowfield killed him. But those initials Craig wrote. Oh, they weren't initials, Patsy. Craig tried to write the chemical symbol for ammonium chloride. NH4CL. Mm -hmm. He wrote the N and the H and got as far as the first elbow stroke of four and then died. We thought he'd written NHL, which, purely by coincidence, happened to be Lane's initials. Oh, I see. Well, Nick, you said Arafield's bronzes were full. How could you tell that? Now, Patsy, you remember this afternoon in my lab, you looked through the microscope at a piece of that spear that killed Craig? Yes. Well, really ancient bronzes become heavily crystallized through the years. But the piece we examined was crystallized only around the outer surface, showing that it was cast quite recently. So that's it. Well, was Arafield trying to sidetrack you with that phone call so he could get it lame when he arrived in town? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Lucky you weren't fooled. Well, you know, it's a funny thing, Patsy. I've met thousands of crooks in my time, each one more clever than the next. And believe it or not, the only ones they fooled in the end were themselves. <laughs> well, Nick... What story are you going to tell next week? Remember the time we drove south to investigate the mystery of a legendary giant called Erdman, the Earthshaker, whose footsteps apparently frightened the man to death? Oh, yes. The clues to the case were green rice grains on the dead man's hand and a drop of blood on a bird feather. Right. What are you going to call the story? The Case of the Bleeding Bobolink. <laughs> Nick Carter, Master Detective, is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Lon Clark is starred as Nick. Charlotte Manson plays Patsy. Script is by Alfred Bester. And any resemblance in these programs to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The entire production is under the direction of Jock McGregor. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented at this time and over these same stations each week by the three great Linex home brighteners. Linex self-polishing wax, Linex cream polish, and Linex clear gloss, created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme fine quality paints. This is Ken Powell speaking for the thousands of Linex dealers all over America and saying so long until next week. is the Mutual Broadcasting System.